I get to hold shields. It's always been like, when I walk into an airway, it's like I'm on holy ground. And he said, wouldn't you love to take a shot at this? And I said, yes, Mr. Martin, I, I, I really would. And he said, I'd really like to see you do that. We had to tear down and clean up first. It's like creation. It's like you've got to see God create something. It, it was amazing. It was, you could see the potential. We opened this. Okay, Just so do you need me to say it again? No, you can do that one. No, you do it. You do better. No, because I'm saying all this. You, all, you have look, to fix it. Look at this. No, I won't fix it. Take one. Here go. So when you're, uh... Rebecca's extremely strong-willed. She was always bossy. Yeah, sort of bossy. Do you remember yeah. that? That's what you got to get to. Okay. All right. Start, start and say the nine. I'll and start it, but she'll have to finish I, it. I, I'll try not to, but <laughs> if she gets a crazy story... I, I, I really give myself some, humble me, myself, some credit for giving her her start. If Teresa was growing up was so sweet and godly, you know, I just... I just look at her now and I think, you've always been this way, baby. Well, I first realized that I could possibly entertain a group when that I would invite all the neighborhood kids up to my grandmother's house, my grandfather. And what I would do is I would put together a show with them. And I would uh, explain to the uh, grandparents that if they paid a quarter, they could come into their own living room and watch the show. And so I decided one day that Rebecca was going to be in our local school talent show. And uh, I loved at that point in the 60s, little Miss Brenda Lee. My baby whispers in my ear. Mm, now mind you, she was six. So I taught Rebecca to pantomime that song. I rehearsed with her hour after hour. Well, I didn't have a car, I couldn't drive. I'd, I, it, it, when my other teenage friends were out and about, I was rehearsing Rebecca. She says she don't remember when, but she won the contest, really. It was just so doggone cute. I mean, she penned mine, you know, and it was so cute. And, and Teresa had taught her this, you know, and she was on stage and she looked like a little doll standing up there, you know. And I really believe that some of Rebecca's persistence as she works with the cast and makes us stay on the stage for hours and hours goes all the way back to me rehearsing with her little Miss Brenda Lee. It's my fault. <laughs> Sweet night. As for Birdie, uh, when we became college roommates, she had a guitar in the room and I said, can you play the guitar? And she said, yes. And I said, well, play something. Well, she wasn't real hesitant about playing the guitar. She was okay with that. But I said, well, can you sing? And she said, no, no, I, I won't sing. Because I started out as a pre-med major in school. And uh, my mama told me, she said, you're going to go to East Tennessee State and you're going to study music. And I said, mama, I'm not going. I wanted to go somewhere else. And I was going to study pharmacy. And that's what I was determined to be. It seems crazy at this point in my life. But at that time, it wasn't. It was just, I, I, I had a fine time helping other people to do things and pushing them to do it, but I just couldn't make myself come out and do it, so. Uh, well, of course, <clears throat> she is in the band, very involved in the band in high school. I would tell you what all else she was involved in, but I, I'll leave that alone. She's sweating right now if she's seeing this. But, but you know, she's, she's very musically inclined her whole life. And then uh, as they went through college and then they got in a seminary, and uh, over in Kentucky doing the plays, we went over and saw the plays there, and that's that's when I really knew. Wow, I mean, it's it's pretty strong. There was no doubt in my mind. If I didn't even know, I would know there was a God. I would know there was a God because He had made such a difference in her life, and how how talented she is, and how smart she is. Bible says pride's a dangerous thing, but it's hard to keep being proud of some things, you know. She had that gift about music, like piano and organ. She had a bachelor's in music, 
I had a, a double degree in journalism and theater. Her sister Teresa asked us to write, uh, pull the music together and write for a, a thing they wanted to do with their youth team. And that's the first time we ever really put anything together. In one of my classes, I needed to write something. And I decided to use the book of Esther. And I wrote, instead of a paper on Esther, I decided to go ahead and write a, a play. And she said, let's put music with it, and then you all direct it, and then we'll tour it. When I changed my major, I was coming out to be a band director, so everything I was doing was instrumental. So I was feeling very comfortable in front of a band with a baton and writing instrumental music and conducting all that. But when we did this, that's the first time I'd done anything with vocalists. Nothing ever changed from then other than it just got more complex. I remember that Rebecca and Bertie were, they were having uh, some questions about, is this what we want to do for the rest of our lives? We want to be full time in uh, the ministry uh, of the church. We're just traveling. We were conversing. She was driving. I was in the passenger seat. And we were just talking. I have no idea what we were talking about. Um, and then, as clear as could be, as if we were talking and you interrupted me. I heard you'll call the company Narrowway Productions. I don't remember discussing that, talking about it, thinking, oh, well, here's what we need to do or we need to act on that immediately. I don't remember any of that conversation or any of that discussion. But apparently, uh, it had made such an impression on both of us that we never forgot it. Later on, we would realize, you know, that everything we did was pretty much centered around what God had called us to do, and that He had named it Narrow Way. I first met Bertie and Rebecca when they um, joined the staff at uh, uh, Pikeville First Baptist Church. We actually only served in two churches, one for five years, one for ten years, so we had a good long term in both of them. Well, I actually knew of them before I met them because my family had moved to Pikeville. I didn't, but my sister was in their youth team and my mother was in their choir. I was a member of that choir and, and Laddie was a member of that choir. I saw Wounded Warrior, which they did the year before I actually met them. And I actually loved that show so much that uh, I asked Sabina, my sister, for a video of it. And I, would, I took it back to school with me. I would play it just to hear the music. Yeah, I probably shouldn't have said that. <laughs> <laughs> we loved those people. We had success. Things were only getting better. That was 1993 in the spring. April uh, 10th, actually, is when I uh, saw Two Thieves and a Savior at the church. That was a show that they did, first time they did it, and at the last minute, they had, uh, Bertie had uh, agreed to sing He's Alive, play her guitar, and uh, so that's when I met them, 1993. Uh, I finished up my master's that summer in June or July, I guess, and made the full move down there to Pikeville looking for a job. Every day at that, I, I had a quiet time, and I had uh, quiet time Bibles. And I would write in my Bibles uh, things on the margins about what was going on in my life. And, and so I remember writing, uh, praying for Rebecca and Bertie, direction in their life, et cetera, et cetera. There was a struggle. There was a sadness. I basically said, we'll do whatever you want us to do. Lots of us say that, but we don't ever expect God to follow through with it. We really don't. And Right after that, I said amen. I think that was the last statement. I do and remember that day when we said it, though. Yeah. Being we, afraid. I do remember thinking. <laughs> and so at that point, that very day, I called Rebecca. And I said, would you be open to this? She said, it's on what used to be Jim Baker's property, Heritage USA. She said, it's been down, I guess, since he was arrested and... I don't know what kind of condition it's in, but she said the Lord clearly brought to my view that old amphitheater. I um, was in Jeremiah chapter 32 and chapter 33, and when I journal, I, it, it becomes almost not, not really a diary, but you can look back and see answered prayer. 
And so I, I can look back and see answered prayer for this ministry for the last 20 years. The way we really got started with Narraway in Fort Mill was we were at the beach. Uh, Virginia and Joe Justice and TC and, and, and Joe Brown and Bernie and Rebecca and myself. And they s said one afternoon, you know, there's something we want you to see. We uh, went with Joe and Teresa and her and Bertie and Peary and I, we went to the amphitheater and climbed over the, it was a, like a wire fence lock or something that we climbed over and got down in there and out of the wooded area. My mother wanted to come down and see it so we brought her down, Jen and I and the kids, and brought mom down. I couldn't wait to get the doors open even though it was, you know, it looked like there was, you know, some wear and tear on it and some graffiti. I remember seeing that and thinking, but I thought I just, I need to see inside that real quick, what's in here. And then I do remember when we walked through and walked through the entrance area and it really was like you had just stepped back in time into another world. We were excited. We knew what they were trying to do and what they wanted to do. And again, what, what it had been still showed. It was absolutely beautiful. There was a holy aura about it when we walked in. It, it was amazing. It was, uh, you could see the potential. It was also run down, broken. You could see the work that there was to do. I uh, had no idea at that point, really. <laughs> had no idea the extent of the work, but... Uh... The first two people we hired were, were uh, Bertie's brother, Joe Clark, and my brother, Philip Martin, and then my daddy came. We didn't give him any money, but my daddy came. But those two men with my daddy, they left Southwest Virginia, which is where that they live, and came down and stayed and did nothing but start the work and head up the work and start the process. It was extremely rough. I thought this is gonna be a lot of work. It was a bona fide mess. I mean, everything about it was rotted out and, and uh, gone through Hugo, no repairs whatsoever from the damage done to that. So I remember that we were actually shoveling solid core doors up and they weren't anything but a pile of sawdust and mess and a doorknob left in the middle of them. It was that rotten. So it was, it was obviously a very big challenge. I really did think the project was too big when we first started. It, it, uh, it looked overwhelming. I, I never thought that we couldn't renovate it because we had already gone through a renovation process an old theater in Pikeville, Kentucky, which was in a similar shape that the amphitheater was when they got here. So they had already done the renovation thing. Oh yes, we can handle this. It was probably too confident in thinking about that. It never occurred to me that we had to have a lot of money. I don't know why. I don't know why money didn't occur to me. Yeah, it did, and when it came, it, it really came. We realized that both of us sold everything we had and everything we'd ever or seen. Or if one we of us died, money. it yeah, wouldn't Yeah, if we even died, help. we couldn't get enough from the insurance for each other, mm -hmm. anything else. And somebody said, gosh, it will take like a million dollars just to clean this place up and get it ready. And then I think it was Terry maybe that said, well, but look what you've already got. After seeing their, you know, and seeing their shows, being involved in the shows, the, the Two Life of Christ productions, particularly, you know, Two Thieves and Savior and the Deliverer, that they'd done in Pikeville. You just knew that stage was made for them. I think without even saying a word, I knew that I was on that journey with them. We made a commitment at that point and, and came on down and got started. And uh, the rest of it's narrow way history, I guess. <laughs> and it, it was not an easy thing. They, they came down here on their savings. I mean, they had saved up a little bit of money individually and they came down here, they, they started using that. And we worked and we picked up glass and we cut down trees and we... We basically gutted the place. We did. Now there were other people to help. I, I do remember, um, I do remember thinking for two guys, this is an awful lot to try to take on. But there were other people, plenty of other people 
from Charlotte. A lot of people from Hickory Grove came in to help with that. They kind of caught the vision. Out of that came the Hollands, people like that, that latched on to the vision and said, we want to be a part of this. It's almost like at that point, God just said okay and put his hand right here and just moved us wherever we needed to go and brought whoever we needed and made it work out. It's almost like he just had, so had it in his hand that it, I don't know how we could have even made it happen. You know, there was just no way we could. We, we could. Couldn't. We didn't have any people here. We didn't have, there weren't 400 Narraway people here. I can't remember at what stage we were in anything. I know we didn't have the cast. But I remember standing in the top of the amphitheater and approving the brochure for the opening of Two Thieves and a Savior, and we did not have a cash. We didn't have, no, we didn't have a cash, and we didn't have any money to because renovate. they told us we got to get a brochure out there. Joe came to me one morning, and uh, he said, Johnny King has given me a call this morning. He's selling his business. And uh, he has asked me, of all things, this is Joe talking, if uh, I had any ideas about how I would like to use some of the money. I said, I want you to ask him about Narraway. I want you to ask him if he will come alongside of us and give us, I actually said at that point, $300,000. I wish I had said a million. We started out with auditions. We came down here and we auditioned in several different places. So once again, Teresa and Joe kind enough to let us audition at Hickory Grove. I remember that TC took out a $50 ad in the Charlotte Observer because we didn't have any money to be able to do it and she paid $50 and she put that ad in there. And then also in the Grand Hotel in the Little Theater, which is where we auditioned Donna Patterson. Donna had an insert into the uh, performers for the Heritage USA. She had participated in the Old Passion play, and because of that, she knew people who it was dear to their heart. They cared about the amphitheater. And it didn't have there. anything to do with us being any, any mm -hmm. big deals because, just I'll share one funny story, because Teresa Dodd uh, auditioned at Hickory Grove Baptist Church, and I was running the uh, little boom box that we had basically for auditions and I remember Teresa looking over at me and saying turn the music up please and going <laughs> all night she didn't have any idea who we were or anything like that so we opened with Two Thieves and a Savior and that in was 1997. in 1997. The funny thing is is we saw the amphitheater on Memorial Week in 1996. We opened that show on Memorial Weekend in 1997. Now, step back in time to a time when Rome reigned, insurrection ruled, and the people of God had nearly lost hope. Narrowway Productions is proud to present Two Thieves and a Savior. In the blink of an eye, the storm was over! Tell me, does the wind have ears to hear? No! Do the waves, do they have understanding? No! And tell me, who but the creator of heaven and earth can make the wind and rains of it. Holy Jesus! Hey! 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 Hey, everybody! Wait till you hear what he did with my sacrament! Oh, I know that I can call you Yes, I know that you'll be there We bought a phone, I think at Office Depot, that had two lines on it <laughs> and plugged them in at home. And then we would answer the the, uh, the calls that would come in, we'd just take turns answering them on those two lines. We were finally able to hire a secretary. And she said, there's a tour company on the phone and they're asking if we have a Christmas show. <laughs> and we just looked at each other and we said, we do. We do. We do have a Christmas <laughs> of show. Of course we do. <laughs> and she hung up and I said, we got to do a Christmas show, and that was the next show we opened. Crackling hillside fires, merry travelers, live animals, and a baby's first cry. It's magical. It's spectacular. It's Jerusalem in Lights. It wasn't called The Real Christmas Story. It was called Jerusalem in Lights. It was the Act 2 version of what we do as the real Christmas story. So it didn't last but about 30 minutes, <laughs> but it was a Christmas show. We completely lit that amphitheater. 
With Christmas lights. With Christmas lights all around that great rock wall, every building and every bit of that was because the people at Regent Carolina had that from the old Heritage USA days and they let us use that. So where we would never have had those lights to do that, once again, God provided that. So we were able to Take do a tremendous light show at Christmas with Jerusalem lights and they were provided for us. The next thing we did was the Deliverer. Both the Two Thieves and the Savior and the Deliverer we had done at Pikeville, Kentucky. Wrote, every, wrote that wrote completely, all the, all the music for Deliverer and recorded here. And all the orchestrations, and a, everything. And O'Domini was next, Lord of Light, Fishes and Loaves. We did, um, and that was the first dinner theater. That was the first dinner theater for uh, us. Fishes and Loaves, we actually did dinner in the outdoor theater. So that's where we realized that people really want to be able to eat. When that they come to see a show, they love to be able to eat. When the property was Heritage USA, it was second only to Disney in popularity. And then everyone knew that it was, it was gone. We were taking care of the amphitheater and we had renovated the old uh, recording studio, the television studio. But everything else around us was not being taken care of. So I remember a, a bus company coming and the, their, the head of the, whoever, the head of the group came down to me after a show one night and he said, I can tell you something. He said, there is nobody that will hold a candle to you all. He said, as far as entertainment, as far as professionalism, he said, as far as first class, he said, you all got it. He said, you absolutely have got it. He said, but I cannot bring my people here anymore because when we come on the grounds, he said, there's so much destruction around, it's already created a, a persona that we can't get by. He said, but as far as what they see when they get here, he said, it's fabulous. He said, but I just can't fight that bringing them in here. When we realized that the amphitheater had sold and we were going to finish up our time there, we had no place to go. We were driving down the road, Highway 21, and we passed by what is now the Narraway Theater, but at that time it was a warehouse and it was amidst all the gambling things down through here. And I just remember Rebecca saying, did you see that? Which to me meant, what? I'm just looking, driving. And I said, I don't think so. And she said, turn around and go back. What happened is the King family and they called us, their daughter, Pat Dinger called to us and she said, will you come over and have dinner with mom and dad, Johnny and Marie Kane. We did. And she said, Dad, tell them what you got to tell them. And Johnny King looked at us and he said, if you can find a piece of property within this amount of money, we'll donate the money for you to buy a piece of property. But the sign was hanging on the, on the building and she said, call that number and see if they'll talk to us about this building. Do it now. For my friends, you shall not pass this way again. We moved into this theater in 2005. We had just finished our Christmas season at Narraway in the amphitheater and closed all that down. And we moved into this theater 2005 and started renovating this warehouse. What was a warehouse at that point?
20 years from now, I want to be able to look back on my life and say the good I knew to do, I did. The wrong I could, I made right. And if I fail at everything else I try, oh, may it never be said of me, I failed to fight the good fight. And that's my charge to you, the class of 1973. Finish well. In 2006, we opened Not Just Another Love Story in this facility. This country is at war with Germany. I'm sure you know about Calvary. Sitting here in this theater right now, I just, for a minute, I just kind of relived that day and thinking, we stepped out in front of this audience that night to speak to them. We were so tired and so afraid, and we hadn't been through it, and we knew that there were just a lot of things that were shaky. And even then, after we got into it, and things even scared us even more, and still, yeah. In spite of all that, when the last note was sung, Visit our website. it was a glorious success. Not just another love story. Not you and